What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of SMG Fishing. As you can see, there's a lot of trolling motors going on back here, but that's not what we're going to be working on today. That is actually another video that won't be coming out for another week. We've actually got something, a little bit of a surprise for you this week. But first things first, let's get this garage cleaned up because I don't know if you can see or not, but this place is becoming a mess. And we got to clean it up a little bit. All right, now that we're done cleaning the garage, we can start working. Well, we kind of cleaned the garage. I more or less just shuffled things around a little bit, but that's okay. That's how everybody cleans their garage, right? Oh, the surprise. All right, let me talk to you about the exciting news I've come up with. Here's what's going on. I have the next four days off. One, two, three. On my last day, my last day's goal is to be on the water fishing. That means I have three days to get this boat ready to go out on the water. And I'm not just talking ready to go out on the water like we did when I lost my GoPro, like have a front deck ready. We've already done that. Put the trolling motors on and stuff. Like I want this thing to be done like 85% of this boat completed by the time the fourth day rolls around. Are you guys excited? I know I am. I'm really nervous too also because that's a lot of work. That's a lot of working on the boat. That's a lot of getting stuff done. That's a lot of video editing. I know that if I don't tell you guys what my plans are, then I won't ever do it. I'll be like, oh yeah, I want to do four days and then I'll probably end up with one day and get to the end and not want to edit the video. So that's why I'm telling you guys four days, three days building a boat, one day fishing. It's going to be a lot of fun. I want to get this thing out on the water, get it ready to fish, get ready to catch some tanks. Get ready to show you guys some awesome videos. All right, so first things first, we got to pick up where we left off. So what we've been doing before we stopped working on this thing was I was cutting out everything to line up for these hinges on top. So now what we've got to do is we got to drill holes to match up with these holes so that they uh, everything's secure on there. So I think I'm just going to eyeball it, you know, screw it. We had the first one in here, right? That's where we had it before. And then what I have to do is also screw in through these angled aluminum pieces over here so that they line up and make everything flush on top. I think I did pretty good. All right, so the fasteners that I'm using, they're all zinc plated stainless steel so that they won't rust. And I'm also using nylon lock washers. I don't know if you can see those very well. Basically they have like a little nylon piece inside of them so that when you vibrate and stuff, they, uh, they don't come loose like regular nut would. Okay, so the front one had two latches on it because it was gonna be used for the live well and the live well lid is only like this big. So this one's gonna have three. It's gonna have one right here, one right here, and one right here because this is gonna be the back part where the, uh, the gas tanks are gonna go. So I want it to be open as much as possible. So that lid is gonna be like this long. So first I'm just gonna mark where the hinges are going. Now what we do is grab the hinge and we're just gonna center it right here and we're gonna outline it. Then we're also gonna come down about two inches and draw a line. Okay, now that we've cut out the holes for where our, uh, our hinges are gonna sit in here. Okay guys, pro tip for you real quick. Uh, for this boat build, I've been buying a bunch of quarter 20 nuts and bolts. So what I've been doing is at first I was going to Lowe's or Home Depot and buying you know, like 20, 50 at a time of what I needed. Uh, however, I figured out that that's not really the most economical way. Um, and it's sometimes better than buying them on Amazon. But what I found is if you go on Amazon and buy in bulk, spend like probably like five to $10 less when in the long run, it really, it really adds up. So make sure you guys go check those links down in the description. Really, if you're looking for anything, go on there. Anytime you can buy in bulk, online, I feel like it's probably worth it to go on there and check it out. You're gonna end up spending less in the long run. All right, well, apparently my audio cut out and it stopped working, so we're just gonna do voiceover for this section. So here I'm cutting out this uh, piece of aluminum for the hinges. I gotta cut out pieces so that the hinges fit in there and that's what you're seeing now. I'm lining everything up and getting ready to drill holes. And I drilled all the holes and then like over here, I probably said something funny, but wasn't really funny. And then here I'm talking about the rod locker and then I'm talking about the live well and where it sits. And now I'm talking about the rear vertical supports and how the batteries sit in between the two and there's gonna be a seat there. And then I'm also talking about the back section where there's gonna be two gas tanks 
And then over here next to the live well is going to be where all my miscellaneous stuff goes, like electrical and plumbing. And then here I'm talking about um, sanding stuff, apparently. Uh, getting all the burrs and splinters and stuff out of the wood before I paint it. And here I am painting really fast. All right, now that the paint's dry, flip them over, paint the other side, and then we gotta work on something else. All right, this is the last project for today. All right, you see this, this is a two-part tongue. If you remember my very first video, or maybe it was the second video, I actually cut this off because it was all welded together. And it, it leaves for like a four foot long tongue. I understand why they, well, I don't understand why they did it on this boat, but on a, like a 10 foot boat or something, you would want a little bit longer tongue on it because it helps you maneuver the boat a little bit easier. However, this trailer is almost 20 feet long, so it's not really necessary to have a four foot long tongue on it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this piece up about four inches because the boat's actually hanging off of the bunks in the back. And when you have a heavy motor on the back of your boat, you don't want your boat extending past those bunks because what it does is it sits there and puts a lot of pressure on the transom and that's how you start to crack your hole and everything. So we need to move this forward in order to let the boat sit a little farther up on the trailer. They probably moved it back to give it a little bit more length up here, which is the wrong thing to do. Here's an easier way to do this. I forgot that I had bought this, uh, it's called a, a quick strip disc. I forgot I bought it. It's supposed to take off just paint and rust. So we'll try that out first. All right, I got this off and, oh, that doesn't look good. That's not good. I haven't seen that before. What it looks like somebody did there is that they had a hole in it, so they uh, use a brazing rod or something to clean it up and fix it up. And then they put a bunch of these pop rivets in here, which are not waterproof, by the way. I don't know if I told you that before or not, but those pop rivets that I use are not waterproof. You should not use those to seal up your hole. So that's where that water was coming through that I didn't know. Fortunately, what I just showed you that the brazed up piece, I will fix it eventually, but it's not that big to me. Um, what I'll probably do is I'll probably throw some silicone on the inside just to uh, clear it up. And um, when I have time, I'll get it welded back up. That's something I didn't catch. And if I would have caught it when I bought it, I probably would have knocked probably another hundred dollars off, but no big deal. Um, like I said, it's above the water line, so it, it is not gonna affect us much. I'm gonna swap this winch out with my other winch. Since I'm gonna sell that boat, I mean, I'm not trying to screw over the next guy, but I don't expect to get a whole lot of money out of that boat. So I'm gonna scavenge what parts I can off of it. Geez, this thing does not last very long. It sure is how it works though. Let's do a comparison. This wire wheel sucks. These things don't last very long, but I would much rather use like 20 of these than one of these. I will definitely link these below in the description so you guys can find some. Uh, they are, wow. They work, I'll give them that. I wish they lasted a little bit longer. All right guys, unfortunately we're all out of time today. We did get a lot of work done today. So now all we have to do is wait for that paint to dry and then we're gonna be able to bolt everything together on the back deck, which is gonna be awesome. We didn't get everything done with the front of the boat, but that's okay. Uh, the parts that we need aren't gonna be here until Tuesday afternoon anyway. So we have three days to work through that and uh, try to figure everything out. We're gonna be able to have a fold away tongue on the front which is gonna be great because it'll actually fit in my garage. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope you guys are gonna enjoy these four days of straight videos, three days of working on the boat, one day of fishing it. It is a three day challenge so we can get out on the boat on the fourth day. Uh, if you guys haven't already, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you guys like this video and this series that we're doing, make sure you go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. All right guys, have a good one.